The way this deck plays, the way this deck wants to be built, like, Burble makes pick a card worth running. Like, single-handedly. And Scamp definitely hits a lot of matchups like that. Yeah, I do like this direction. This direction feels good. This is, like, a really weird deck. What? So, this is going to be a very interesting build to optimize. So, we have to think, like, what we want. The pick a card forces us into... We're, we're like a proactive combo deck. That's kind of what this is. Like, pick a card forces us into proactive cards. We can't really play, like, protective all-in reactive tools. Which kind of works for these colors, because the combo deck in these colors wasn't really using a lot of those kinds of tools anyway. And we have to... Yeah, so it's like a proactive option combo deck. I mean, I'll, I'll put Chase Stalker back to a 3F for now. I, I kind of suspect it's a 2F, but I don't know what to cut for it yet anyway. I unironically thought about the 6 mana rally card with Plunder, Citrus Courier. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's a weird deck. It'd make the deck worse, but if you had one Island Navigator, you could get some great YouTube OTK clickbait content. Yeah, with the leveled up Zoe and the Elusives. I mean, that's true. Is there a cheaper way of getting the scout keyword? Can't they... Uh, Plunder Poro doesn't work. The timing of that with the... Uh... Man, Plunder Poro with Zoe is actually really funny, though. Doesn't doesn't that work? Or does the order of operations, like, mess that up? Can you actually not use Plunder Poro with Zoe? So this is actually a pretty crazy hand. Um, God, I might be about to keep both of these pails. This is a really dumb matchup where keeping TF alive is kind of the only thing that matters. And Pale is kind of really important to that, just because it play, it's one health and cycles. I'm kind of... Ooh, that's trips we don't want to see. I'm a little vulnerable to aggro does. Don't play Butcher. Nice. Okay. As long as you didn't play Butcher on one, we're fine. Because this, this this hand is... Whoa, that's even better. Oh my god. So we, we mulliganed in a way that made this vulnerable to aggro draws, but it's good for everything else. And I mean, as you can see, we're in the everything else scenario right now. So he could actually have the rare double go hard hands, but I mean, I've got the triple pale hand, so I shit all over the double go hard hand. I think I just attack now. He probably has the second go hard here. Huh, oh, he's playing around second pale. Man, what an intellectual. I mean, he didn't play TF on 4, so my TF is unlocked. And I'm technically safe from, like, a single Gohard. The only problem is, uh, literally, double Gohard is in his range right now, even though he played one already. Because he easily could have had a second one that he declines, and the Zap can draw the third one. So, playing TF here is actually not necessarily safe. I think I still have to do it anyway. I mean, what are the odds of that, really? Red card, yeah, but we lose to Vile Feast. Go hard here. Ellen, what do you think about Vile Feast in this Go Hard deck? How bad do you think it is? Who says I, don't I mean, we never really care about this. Since when did face damage decide this matchup? BBG plays it in his list. out of eight so we have a pretty good hand here we're probably gonna be able to fit in this little guy into this hand so we have to be wary of his own gold card here that could be a little nasty i probably want to open spicy sketcher and i think i might actually hit the star chart here yeah, i'm never gonna need to play this get out so we would have snap drawn the snake i think messenger might be a bit better moon glow is can't be right, but it's almost close to being right. Moonglow actually could have been right. A serious artist now. I paint sparkle flies. <laughs> what the heck was that voice line? I mean, am I just passing here? What is this guy's hand? He's wailing? I mean, even if he's wailing, attacking here is still better. I can't attack with Zoe if he's wailing though. Yeah, I guess I just attack like this. I mean, 
I don't think letting him play his mana here even really does anything. He's gonna gangplank. It could easily be gangplank and he doesn't want to give up the keg. Ruination next turn? Yeah, it could have been that too. I don't know. I have a really big hand. If he like open ruinated me, I don't think that would even be bad. I mean, we can level up our TF here and then start playing scamp stuff. Do we just do that? Do we just open level TF so that scamp can just start carding? I guess so. I mean, that's just... That's just our process right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, we should have like bursted it all down so that we can, I think, scamp before he can do anything. I don't know if that's worth it though, because we'd have to use the pails proactively too. I mean, we could use Zap as one of them if we really wanted to, but that I think would be quite a bit worse. Because we'd still have to pale anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think we just double pale here. <clears throat> I mean, when you level up TF, you're just kind of chilling. Like, that's that's just the rules of the game. Okay. Wee. I know, right? I would spell thief go hard here for two triggers. <laughs> I mean, there's a chance he kills the TF here, but I don't really think I care because we have a second TF and it means our Zoe levels too. So I'm kind of fine with that. So yeah, I mean, I can Spell Thief right now and red card. I think that's the most important thing. But if I had Spell Thiefed first, we could have also gold carded this turn. I mean, I guess I could just go hard that. We're just going aggro here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I could have used the other Spell Thief, but I think go hard is just better here. I mean, we just have a pretty good open attack. Eh. Sketcher might be better. We want to maximize our Zoe level first, then play the Shade Stalker after. No, it's just Zap Sprayfin after. The Zoe level needs to be maxed. So it's the, just the go hard into the Zap next turn? Is that worth it? I mean, we don't have to care about Ruination here. Like go hard to flex on him. Yeah, we can we can start go harding to flex on him. We've got the we've got the pick of cards. We can pack his bags here. Stalker's fleeting. Yeah, but I don't care. The thing is, the TF deck draws so many cards that it, it doesn't really matter. Like it's not really worth sketching there just for that. Oh yeah. Oh, it's happening. We're doing it. All right, we have to TF now. This looks like a bad TF, but it's low key a really good TF. I hope he doesn't concede. I need to assert my dominance by go harding this guy. So if I pick a card now, I get my blue card and I will shuffle the other go hard before anything else happens. So I can send away Sketcher and my zap will tutor me more go hards. Okay, so we get blue card here and then we'll we'll go hard before we draw off of the pick of cards. That'll be the second go hard here. Nice. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, just two more. Wait, has he played a single go hard yet? Did he play, he played one earlier? I think he's he's at one. Did I miss the second one? Oh no, he's at two. I mean, <coughs> whatever. Okay, let's see if we hit. We didn't draw it. Oh, there it is. So we've got the third Gohard here and we've got Spell Thief for the fourth one right now. Man, what an easy game. Well. Eh. I mean, I care enough, I guess. <clears throat> I don't know, the pack your bags doesn't even do that much here though. That's kind of the problem. Eh, it's good enough. I mean, I can't, I can't not pack his bags here. Oh yeah. Oh. 
That feels so good. <laughs> oh, what a phenomenally stupid game. So we've got Jailbreak. I guess I just go wide. Why do all of my units have one health here? Something went wrong. Ooh, give me a keyword. Give me, like, regen. Ooh. I can't play Croker. Croker adds to my open attack here. Wait, I've got a problem. Hang on. <clears throat> what was I trying to hope to hit there? Alright, we've got it. It's the easiest open of our lives. Uh oh. Oh, please don't hit the second whale. We're fine, guys. We never lose these. Like, even if he just whales us here. Oh, yeah. Very easy. All right, great. Yeah, this version's sweet. I'm still adjusting a lot of cards. I think I do want to cut down on three of pretty, pretty hard. I definitely don't like running three Spell Thief. I, spell Thief is cute in this deck, but it's a one over a two of. As adorable as it is. And it is very adorable. It is very adorable. There was a discussion around talking Bear over Burble. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Bubble Bear is, is a bad card. I kind of assumed you guys wouldn't be talking about Bubble Bear. <laughs> one of those cards has attack points. Okay, at least go hard again. It's actually, so I, I talked about this in, in the meta Monday, that the meta report I did on my YouTube. It's actually so insane how much like TF go hard there is at these ranks. It's it's a pretty good deck, but it gets countered by a decent amount of things like Field of Rush Control, and it has a lower win rate than every other tier one deck as well. Like it's a good deck, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's bad, but it is bizarrely disproportionately overrepresented. Um. I mean, the aggro game plan is one of our lose conditions, but I don't think Parlay hits enough spots in this matchup. I'll just keep the TF and try to build around that plan. It's the best deck right now. It's pretty good. I... I mean... I can't imagine it being the best deck right now. Like, it doesn't have the best matchup tables right now, and it isn't the best in stats right now. It's like... I mean, depending on how we're weighing win and play rate, this might have been a misplay, by the way. We have two. Depending on how we're weighing win and play rate, it's anywhere between, like, 5th and 10th best win rate. Like, at high ranks, it's... I mean, it's a, it's a nice, versatile deck because it's non-polarizing, which is, which is important for a deck if you want to kind of grind out a deck for a good period of time. It needs to be non-polarizing. I don't know. I, I don't actually think it's like, it's not like the best deck in the game. It doesn't have the best matchup tables. It doesn't have the highest win rate. It's it's the most annoying deck in the game if you, just because you see it so much in the past month. But it's not really a rational process that so many people are playing it. And playing Pool Shark this early kind of sucks. I mean, I guess I just send Zoe into the keg. I don't know. This is kind of weird. Gahard is whatever right now. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good deck. It belongs in tier one, but it's not like, I mean, it's not like super oppressive. It, I shouldn't be seeing it in like 70% of these games. It's the most fun tier one deck. I think it's pretty fun, but I mean, fun is a little subjective, but also I think things get less fun when you see them too often. Yeah, I mean, as efficient as it is mana wise to pull shark here, it kind of commits us out of the TF next turn if we want to gain value out of the draw. And he doesn't have enough aggression. Like, he owns the board and we don't, which kind of sucks. But we have 20 health, and his board ownership is really small. So I can actually just pass there. It seems weird. I know, like, it's it, especially if you come from another card game, the idea of just, like, burning mana just feels so uncomfortable. But in this case, it just makes sense. So TF is pretty safe to play here unless he has second deckhand and second Gohard. And I mean, if he just has that, then he's just a good player. People misplay with Gohard. That's why the win rate is low. People misplay with every deck. I mean, it's harder to play than the average deck. But all the decks that are tier 1 are hard to play. People misplay Field of Rush. People misplay Lizoe. People misplay Tom Soraka.
Like, most high tier decks in the game right now are the ones that are harder to play. Which, I, that's a good thing. Okay, so Guiding Touch is actually a neat draw there because I want to maximize my odds of flipping this TF. I mean, I don't really hate open attacking. We do want to be able to beat his gold card, which we have enough with just Pale and Guiding Touch. The fact that he only has five mana, he's not banking spell mana, means I'm safe against his gold card. If he wants to try to threaten mine, I've got Pale. And then if he wants to re-threaten with a one mana, you know, uh, thingy, then I've just got Guiding Touch anyway. Which is nice. Again, I mean, this matchup is just all about, you know, uh, letting the TF go off. So here, I guess I can actually just zap instead of Fortune Cooker and actually deal a little bit of extra damage instead. Sure. Hmm. Attacking with this 1-2 is kind of a big dick play. The only problem is, like, a lot of people would just block with a 3-3 and not even really mind if I had the pale. So I kind of shouldn't do it. Should have paled Shark IMO. Um... Yeah, yeah, there's not really a counter to Paling Shark. Yeah, that's probably true. I agree. For sure. Okay, so our TF is 5 out of 8, which is pretty great. We can start with a Croaker on the Pool Shark. We want to level up the TF at speed here, basically. It's kind of the only thing that matters. Okay, our TF is probably not leveling here unless Guiding Touch draws Pale or Guiding. That's a bit awkward. I mean, TF might go down here. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, I can kick one hush in this matchup. <sighs> Moonsilver doesn't do enough at this stage in the game. It would have been very useful earlier, potentially. I like Serpent here. So that was... Was that only his first go hard? Second, right. Okay. Well, would you say this is the best deck in the game right now if go hard isn't? Uh, I don't know if there exists like a single best deck, but right now scouts, I think if, if we're talking about every rank, it's probably scouts. They fall off a bit more at high ranks. If we're talking about high ranks, Ezreal Burn and Field of Rush Control are both, I think, a bit better than Gohard at high ranks. But I mean, yeah, it's close. So, I mean, we can go wide on this board anyway. I think I just want to maximize my health gain. It looks like he's not threatening the TF. And I don't mind giving away this elusive. Sure. I might have wanted to pick a card that, I guess. I don't know. I like a zero mana 2 2 here, though. So I don't think the third go hard is in his range. Vile Feast isn't either. Huh. He had Glimpse there, too. That's interesting. I wonder why he didn't glimpse first. Now if he draws the other go hard, RTF could be kind of screwed. He's got two draws to hit... How many outs? Five? Yeah, I mean, there's kind of nothing we can do about that. Feels bad. Yep, he got it. Yeah, and I think this definitely... We could have done something about this a bit earlier. Uh, using pick a card last turn could have been correct and as you guys mentioned uh i i definitely misplayed the pale cascade i shouldn't have gone on the tf there touch tf wait why is that the gamba no i'll pick a card on the hush instead we're in a pretty bad state if tf isn't leveling I mean, we need to go pretty wide. Nab means, you know, we can't beat the Packer Bags when he plays it afterwards. If I'm not open attacking, his TF can survive go hards. Or maybe, like, level up in some weird hands. So I think we're kind of forced into open attacking, but... Yeah, I mean, our odds of winning are just really bad. He's got, like, really good progress on the Packer Bags right now. Yeah, I mean, that's solid. Um, if I use Spell Thief, there's nothing that counters that, so... Yeah, right now, he's got... Didn't he, he played three, right? So he's got the pack your bags now. Come yeah, I mean, I, I guess we're just pretty screwed. 
The odds of him having that are pretty high. Uh, the best play... I mean, I could see the best play just being pick a card, the zap. If I play the zap here, it'll probably just get pack your bags. Man, how do we beat that pack your bags hand right now? My health is pretty high. We still have a lot more elusive draws. I think when... when it's It's actually kind of fascinating. When they get pack your bags very early, and they don't... And it's not enough to close out the game. Sometimes it actually kind of works just fine in your favor, right? If that makes sense, because it kind of if it you, it can brick your draws for the rest of the game. Sometimes you like get your first pack your bags and then you draw like three dud go hards in the mid game. It's pretty rare, but can end up being a win condition. Pass here. Can you spell thief pack your bags? No, it only works on go hard. Nab works on pack your bags. And you can Spell Thief go hard and then eventually play enough of your own go hards to get Pack Your Bags. But Spell Thief doesn't work on Pack Your Bags. So, I guess I can parlay the Powder Keg. That's okay. Doesn't really do a lot. Does more than developing a unit here. It's so sad that it works that way. Yeah, it's a little sad. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I think that's actually worth trying to keep alive. It's a bit of a commitment. We can Spell Thief the Whale too. Ooh, that's actually sick. I forgot you can Spell Thief on the stack. That's pretty crazy. Could go for the Vile Feast here instead, keep my mana more open. Whale actually doesn't really do enough against this board. If I have Vile Feast, I lose the spider. Yeah, I think mana value is actually better here. Just because everything on his board has two health. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, seems good. And yeah, the reason we buffed the Zoe was because if, if our win condition is keeping Zoe alive, which I think in this hand it was, then I mean, we can still keep her alive through Whale. I, I understand that if we resolved right after the paler, Zoe would still die. It's weird that you can steal from the stack. Yeah. It's intended, and it's kind of cool, but it's unintentional. Or it's unintentional. It's uh, unintuitive. No, it isn't. I heard someone say Steve Rubin said it was intended, so I don't know. I mean, if he's got pack your bags, he's slow rolling the shit out of this right now. Yeah, I mean, he kind of can't have it. That's a very, very big deal for us. I can... I mean, I can actually just Guiding Touch block with Zoe. No, Zoe only has two health this round. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we actually don't really need to do anything else, right? This is very fascinating. Yeah, I can't keep anything else alive. Okay. The play could just be Guiding Touch into Fortune Croaker. I can use Pull Shark first if that's the line then. I think we need, we really want to pick a card this turn. So we pick a card. We'd have to send away the Fortune Croaker if we wanted to pick a card this turn. That's the only way to do it. Oh, I think it's actually so important to pick a card this turn. I think we have to. So, it's kind of sad. It's really tempting to go for, like, Croaker, Pool Shark, etc. But the thing about this spot is that we need to put him on a two-turn clock. And if we don't pick a card now, you have to. You want to be picking a card on the defensive turns so that you draw the cards on the offensive turns, right? Generally. There's a lot of exceptions. But it's so important to get the pick a card on defense so we get all the cards on offense so that we can actually put him on the two-turn clock we need to. So, Ruination is all over his range right now. Which is a little awkward. I can threaten a lot of damage, and my Zoe threatens a crazy amount of value, so he might not feel like he can hold off on the Ruination. Let's start with a Pool Shark. That takes Zoe to 7. It hasn't seen the Croaker yet, because we shuffled this one Croaker back. So I can Croaker now. That'll take Zoe to 8. She's seen the other one. So we want to level up Zoe here. While keeping maximal, you know, post-Ruination value. Ruination now? Oh, it's pack your bags now. Did he play that from... He didn't have that last turn. He's trolling if he had that last turn. Okay, so I do have the ability to level up Zoe. I think. Only if Pale Cascade draws me a card. Because she's already seen one Cascade, right? I, I did Cascade last turn. 
I'm not, I'm not misremembering. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I can cascade her right now and hope that it draws enough. It's kind of funny. I actually think I just don't do that. I think we just retransition into a TF win con now. It's really low odds that we can actually get the Zoe level. And I don't know if the Zoe level matters enough now. And yeah, th this is the kind of game where if they pack your bags a little too early, it's kind of okay. If that deck doesn't have a way to close the game with that, their, their draws in the next four turns actually get really, really, really bricked. So we play for most value here. I think we probably have to blue card. I don't think we can go as aggressive. Hmm. Not using red card is a little... Like, I would use red or gold if I could actually stop damage by doing that. There's the Vengeance. Okay. I could have tried seeing if we could have baited him under that, but I actually don't think that matters that much. So he's got to have the Bricked Out Hands. He could have a Ledros. We should be playing around Ledros here. If we Pale, we can hit the third Burble. So we're going in for the double Burble. And... We might want to pale this turn because it's a fleeting pale. Or I can just discard it with Sketcher. No, we need the we need the cycle for it. So I can open Sketcher into Hush. Would that change our line at all? No, the pale has more of a chance of changing our line. So we'll Boba Fish first. See what we draw. Because we only have the Sketcher if we don't want to play either of the Burble Fish's spell. Well, I guess we've got a Sketcher discard. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, or I could like two turn clock him, but if I Night Stalker, I can't pale. Yeah, I think I need to pale here. I think there's actually a good chance we're going to need a Ledris blocker against this range. And, and I need my Ledris blocker to not uh, be an elusive because I can't sacrifice an elusive. So the charger here playing after the Ledris could actually matter a lot. And if he open attacks, I don't think he's doing enough to threaten lethal anyway. So I think we can we can try to put him on a two turn clock. We, we played for, it's just, we had to play the way we did just because he was at 18. Because we have to kill him by turn 11. That's our last chance to kill him here. So we had to pack your bags on turn 8 so that we could do enough damage on turn 9 so that turn 11 would be lethal. And, I mean, we, we took him down to 10, which is nice. Interesting. Okay, so that's fairly expected. Um, I could glimpse here. I'm dangerously close to milling myself, but glimpse actually does provide some options, and I'm not actually at the mill yet. Spell thief the pack. It doesn't work on pack. Uh, we didn't hit. I mean, yeah, none of these are actually good. I think vile feast is actually the best one. Pretty pretty sad, but vile feast saves us some damage here. I don't think he has Glimpse. He probably should have used it one or two turns ago. We saw that he drew the Go Hard off the top. So he, we can pre-vile there because he shouldn't have Glimpse. And we've got one additional action here. I don't think he has Ledros because he leaned into attack there. And we do want to play our Fleeting Shade Stalker this turn. I guess we can just play this now, right? Okay, so we're going in for the Elusive Kill next turn. We're just out of land units entirely. And 9 is out of range of pretty much everything. So, yeah, we're kind of just chilling. Looks good. So we want to be able to beat Ruination, which is kind of the last big problem. Maybe I used 1 mana too many. Because we, we want to be able to open attack. We've got a total of... 9 damage with a Pale top deck. We're probably drawing Pale off of Zap. We actually have pretty good odds. Ugh. Yeah. We're probably a bit unfavored into Ruination. Parley is actually not a bad draw. I would have preferred it on a native draw and not Zap draw. He can't really Ruinate this turn. Charger pushes 2 here. Yeah, Charger is good here, I think. Kind of has to be. It lets us open attack, but if we want to save Charger for the post ruination, that's even better. So Charger pushes two here. We've got the open attack that pushes a grand total of nine. We've got one draw to hit Pale Cascade or second parlay. I have not used... How many Pales and Parlays have I used? How many Pales and Parlays have I used? 
This game has gone on so long. I don't think I've used the parlay. But he can heal. He has a ton of gohards in his deck. Two pails. I've used two pails. I can jettison right now to get deck information. That's that's a little sick. It's a, I, th I think it's too sick. I mean, we have enough redevelop to to be able to, I think, beat Ruination Hands. Uh, if I don't open attack, we're kind of vulnerable to the go hard anyway. I can't... If I play... I mean, if he, if he taps under, I can't play against Ruination. Yeah, I guess I'm just open attacking. We actually have to extend this. We actually have to play for turn 13, I think. So weird. Jettison really loves you. I know! I so wanted to use Jettison there! I wanted to use it for deck information. It actually would have changed that play. Seeing what card we're more likely to draw into next turn changes how we play there. But I think right now the optimal play is just to make sh to to extend the game. We actually have to just draw this game out even further. And if we jettison there, then we're actually milling ourselves if we draw it out further, which is yeah, pretty funny. Ah. Uh. How many other Gohards has he played? I haven't been counting the second batch of Gohards. <sighs> so we have to stay out of range. Just one since pack? Yeah, it's just one since pack. I mean, I don't think I need to block very aggressively. Can he actually threaten three here? How does he... I mean, we can go down to three, right? There's... There's no punish if we just block like this. Just keep everything at two health. Red card, Doom Beast. Yeah, maybe red Doom Beast. Don't think that's in his range, but I guess it would be really funny if that happened. So, I mean, our zap is temporary. If we read him correctly and it's Ruination, then we have to zap afterwards. If we have the open attack, then discarding Zap is fine. I think I pass here. I think he has to have Ruination, and he has to play it here. I mean, if he's paying attention, he might know that, like, Zap gets really awkward. But I think he is forced into Ruinating now. So even though we have a fleeting Zap, now we can redevelop it. And because we didn't jettison. I Again, I so wanted to jettison, but it was just not... Not correct, obviously. So now, we redevelop. He hasn't shown the left card. The left card is Pool Shark. So he can't have Go Hard in his hand. The left card was the only one that could have been Go Hard. Pool Shark is not. I know. Oh, second at least. That's actually kind of obnoxious. I need lethal next turn. <laughs> Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. What the? What? Are we? Are we? Yeah, I guess we're just playing this out longer. I guess I have to open attack with Charger. I can like hush the Ledros if it's a Ledros top deck. Go hard is just. I mean, I have to open attack with Charger. I can't not attack with Charger. He has to play around Parlay because he's seen one Parlay, so he has to block my Charger because he knows I run Parlay. If you jettisoned, you could have guaranteed TF. Have I played all of my Zoe's already? Oh god! Yeah, there might have actually been a crazy jettison spot. I I can't remember how many champions I've played. This game has gone on too long. Wait, okay. How many champions have I played? Actually, this matters. It might be proper to jettison right now. I've played one TF. I played two Zoe's. I think I only played one TF and two Zoe's. Did I play two TFs? 2 TF, 2 Zoe. So if I jettison now, we have a draw 2. And one of them is Zoe and one of them is TF. And that doesn't win me the game, so I can't jettison. So I guess I just pull Shark now. But yeah, jettison tossing can't work on champions. So if I had jettisoned like last turn, I would have ensured that my top deck would have been a TF or a Zoe. Which is actually interesting. So he did have the Ledros. 
Now we're at one, but his deck doesn't have the one reach, so we can like hush block the Lydros. And we don't need to sacrifice our elusive for it. Ooh, this at least has fearsome though. Man, that sucks. If only I could gift give her and gem in one action. And then there's the spider. Yeah, the spider just kills me. There's nothing I can get off of Burblefish. If I get Spell Thief off of Burblefish, I have a chance. I think I pre-hush Elise, and then I Burblefish. Because Burble can block Ledros. He played Ledros off the top. He drew two cards. The other card could be the Go Hard. But because I pre-hushed the Elise, she's both blockable and doesn't summon the spider. I mean, I don't really have a win condition, though, is kind of the only thing. It's kind of funny staying alive here, but it also kind of doesn't accomplish anything. Like, eight is... If it was, like, six, I could do some weird stuff. Things could happen, but I don't think I can do eight. I don't think I can do eight. Jailbreak? Okay, so jail... Oh. Okay, so Jailbreak has to hit Navori Blade Scout. So we can't use it this turn. We have to use it next turn for the Blade Scout Elusive. Okay, watch the cards in hand. The left one is the only one that can be go hard. We hit the TF. Cards left in deck one. Okay. The last card in our deck is a Zoe. We had one TF and one Zoe. So if I blue card, I draw my Zoe and, yeah, deal basically no damage to him. Man, really sad. Man, this was actually so close. <laughs> Literally just getting milled. PP hands. Alright. I'm gonna go out on my own terms. Oh, I thought it was a Zoe. I guess I actually did play all three Zoes. Kind of funny. I mean... Skechers close enough. Two Jettisons was too hard. God, if one of them was actually something decent, I actually might have been able to win this game. It's possible. I've got a zero mana Jettison. That's not bad. I want to show the Jettison. I, I, I like. I I need him to. Uh, I need him to pass here so I can show Jettison before I concede. If a Jettison was a spell thief, I think you 100% win. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Come on, man. Let me show you my Jettison. Come on. I just want to show it. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> that was that was a crazy game though. That was a crazy game. For for actually being able to stay on that and having real win conditions. Th this deck actually does kind of need to like this deck will sometimes it won't normally go that late, but you do actually need to keep track of like how much of what you've drawn of stuff cuz we will go to like 10 cards left a lot. And what that means is like you significantly affects probabilities of how you play based on how you top deck.